We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to open our Bibles. In the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah chapter 6. We can read the first two verses. Isaiah, Old Testament, chapter 6. The first two verses. It's showing here on the projection. That's, that's what it says. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. And the train of his rope filled the temple. Above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his feet. With two, he covered his feet. And two, he flew. Lord, we praise you. Thankful for this instance that we have had already with fellowship with you. We ask you in your word, we may once again bless your people in the church and in this place. We pray in the name of Jesus. Holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Uzziah died. 
the word speaks of a moment, of an instant, of a period. that took place, that happened, so that a man called Isaiah would be able to leave a profound experience with his God. But who this King Uzziah was? The word described in the book of Chronicles, chapter 26, even writes regarding him. The word says that Uzziah, he began to reign when he was only 16 years of age. And he reigned for 55 years in Judah and in Jerusalem. Uzziah built a city called Elijah. He was what was righteous to, through, to the eyes of the Lord. Uzziah sought the Lord and God made him prosper. He edified other cities. The Bible says that God helped him to fight against the Philistines. The fame of Uzziah went all the way to Egypt. Uzziah built war machines and God helped him to fight against the Philistines. Uzziah grew stronger and when he grew stronger, he exalted his own heart. He got corrupted and he transgressed against the Lord. And when the heart of Uzziah got exalted, when arrogance entered into his heart, vanity, the pride, He wanted now to exercise a role that was not his. And here we have a teaching for all the servants of God. In the Old Testament, God made it very clear three roles, the king, the priest, and the prophet. King is king, prophet is prophet, and priest is priest. A few kings have been used with the spirit of prophecy. They were prophets. King Saul, he prophesied. David also prophesied. But none of them exercised or try, wanted to exercise the role of being a priest because the role of priestlyhood was for another tribe, it was another people. Uzziah was from the tribe of Judah, and the priests are, were for the Levite, the descendants of Aram. So every time that we want to occupy a place that is not ours, that belongs to someone else, because of pride and or greed, uh, pride and vanity, we get corrupted and we transgress against the Lord. And the Bible says in the Old Testament regarding this, each one should stay according to the vocation to which they have been called. If I have been called to be a king, I will reign. If I have been called to be a priest, then I will, I will be exercised priestlyhood. And the, the role of the priestlyhood, what was that? Was to carry the petition the supplication, the plea, the prayer of the people to God and receive the instructions from God and relay those instructions to the people. So he was the representative of God before the people and representative of the people before God. And this role of priestlyhood today in our days is reserved to the, the Holy Spirit because he is the one who intercedes for us before the Lord with inexpressible moans. And when he tried to exercise this role that was not his, so leprosy 
took a hold of him. And leprosy is typifies sin. So he, he, he sinned, it transgressed against the Lord, against the law of the Lord. He had knowledge about the law, but even so, he transgressed against it because he was lacking the fear of the Lord in his life. Was, his heart was lacking the fear of the Lord. So the Bible says, speaks about this man that after he had done this, that he made this um, unhappy decision, he ended up having to leave apart in a house. He was excluded. Uh, it is written, he was excluded from the house of the Lord. And the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So here we have the first teaching for us tonight. We need to fear the Lord and give Him glory. In the word, the Lord says that it was exactly during this period, the period of the death of the King Uzziah, that Isaiah had this experience with God. But since the people was, how was the people doing during this period in this year of the death of the King Uzziah? In the first chapter here of the book of, of Isaiah, the Lord describes the situation of the people of that time, how the people of God was before the Lord. The Lord says that The people had left the Lord. The people's blas blasphemy against the Holy of Israel, and many were going backward. They were, in other words, going astray from the path of the Lord. And the Lord makes an alert. He says the following, Every head is sick. Every mind is ill. And every heart is weak. So it was a moment in which the mind, the head was sick and the heart was weak. And why was the mind was sick and the heart was weak? Because the people had forgotten about the law of the Word of God. And the Lord makes a complaint. He says the following. The oxen knows his owner. The donkey knows the manger of his owner. But my people does not know me. My people does not have the understanding. So those were days in which the people didn't know the Lord and didn't have the understanding of his plan and his project. Jesus speaks about this. Examine the scriptures, because they are the ones who testify of me, of me. And you have an eternal life. You make mistakes because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. So that was the situation of the people at that time. It was the situation of the people in the time of Jesus as well. And it's also the situation of the people of God today without the knowledge and without the understanding of the plan and the project of God. So the Word says that even in those days, Isaiah didn't know he had not seen the Lord. And how many are not still to this day, to this year, without knowing the Lord? Job says the following, before I knew you from hearing about, and how many people know the Lord only from hearing about? But salvation is not knowing the Lord from hearing about. Salvation is to see God. That's why he said the following, Before I knew you from hearing about, but now my eyes see you. When Jesus goes to Jericho and he meets with the blind man from birth, Bartimaeus, he asks a question to Bartimaeus. What do you want, Bartimaeus? What do you want me to do for you? 
in Bart Mills, in a very wise way, he's, he answers what he wants. I don't want to know you from hearing about. I don't want to know you because you, the Lord, is the son of David. I want my eyes to see you because I want to be saved. That's why he comes before the Savior, Jesus, and he says, uh, he asked that he wants to see. And what was the answer of Jesus to him? See, and what did he say? He saw Jesus, he saw salvation, he was saved. Simon, a man of old age, was 80 or 82 years of age, I am not sure. He goes to the temple. And there, Jesus, he was introduced with to, to eight, eight days of age. And he picks up Jesus on his lap. And he says something interesting to God that was registered on God's word. He said, Now God, God send you or a, can take your son to heaven because his eyes had already seen salvation. So I, he had an experience with the Lord. And the Lord wants to show this through Isaiah to you, to me, to each one of us. But in order for this to happen, in order for this to take place, it is necessary that the king dies. Because when the king dies, it comes to an end, a period of a reign. When the king dies, what happens? Another one takes, becomes king. Another one reigns. So it was necessary for man to die, Uzziah to die, so that the Lord could reign in the life of Isaiah. And that's what he saw. From that moment, that's what he saw. He saw now another king. Not an earthly king, but a heavenly king. In the year in which King Uzziah died, we sing a song that, that says the following. It says a verse, a Bible verse. I, uh, I wrote it down. If it is necessary, even uh, heaven, uh, I will be able to gain. It was necessary for Isaiah, the king. The king of, of Isaiah to die. Necessary. The king to die in my life, in our life, so that the Lord may reign. That's why the Apostle Paul says the following. Today I've been crucified with Christ. And today I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because now the other one is going to reign. Now it's a new period. It's a new moment. Because the one who is in Christ is a new creature. That's what the Lord was pointing out there regarding to what was happening that, that was being introduced and presented to Isaiah on the year in which King Uzziah died. Me? Why me? Because salvation is a personal experience. In the year in which King Uzziah died, David saw the Lord. Wayne saw the Lord. Tiago saw the Lord. So salvation for David it was also for Tiago. But in the way in which King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, so the experience of salvation was for me. And salvation is a personal experience with salvation with the Savior. I saw the Lord and where was the Lord? He said the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on a high a sublime throne. He saw the Lord, his King, his Savior, sitting upon a throne. Why? Because now he's going to reign. Now he's going to judge. Now he's going to give orders. And now I will accept his plan, his project for my life. Sitting upon a high, sublime throne and his scepter and his robe filled the temple showing what Isaiah saw in that day 
He saw the room of the throne. He saw the eternity of the God. He saw the, the Lord sitting at the throne, judging our causes. Thank you, my friend. He saw that God was not alone in that place. There was uh, an entourage, it was a crowd that was following him, of beings that were there to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Beings that were in this place to adore him, to honor him. Because the role, our role before the Lord, and when we come close to his presence, is to honor and to adore him. Because all the honor and all the glory may be for him, for the Lord. And this, the robe filled, the robe filled that, that temple. When the Lord calls us into his presence, in the same way that he called Isaiah. He didn't call Isaiah because it was good or because it was righteous, none of it. Isaiah himself, he confessed who he was. I'm an impure man. I inhabit in the midst of an impure people. God didn't call you because you are holy or because you are righteous. But God calls you. He calls me in order to justify us and to sanctify us. Because everything belongs to him. Everything comes from him. And he thought that he was going to die. Oh, well, I'm perishing. And he thought, right. The king, he needed to die, and he also needed to die in order to live a new experience with the Lord. His desires were killed, his thoughts, his feelings, the desires of his heart, so that he would be freely serve the Lord. And the word says, my brethren, that when he contemplate the, the room of the throne, he sees the seraphims, and he sees the behavior of those beings, the angels. Interesting, he could have looked at the behavior of the crowd. He could have looked at the behavior there of the king that was in the throne. That is the Lord. But no. The Lord made him look to the seraphims. And the way in which the seraphims behaved before the Lord. And what was the way in which the seraphims behave before the Lord? The word describes that the seraphims, they have six wings. Six typifies man. But with a pair of wings, two, two speaks about fellowship. So when man is in fellowship with God, his face is covered. The servant of God, John the Baptist, he says, it's better that he grows and that I grow smaller so that every honor may be given not for me but to the Lord. So Isaiah on that day, he had this understanding that everything that he did would be for the honor and glory and the praise and adoration for the glorification and exaltation of the Lord God. That he would not have an identity, he would not be identified. But the one who was going to be identified is the one that was on the throne. And he speaks about the feet. Two wings cover the feet. Why the feet? Feet speak about the walk, of your walk. And he knew how his walk had been until that moment, the walk of, of Isaiah uh, until that moment. He walked with, he was impure, and he walked with an impure people. So that from that moment forward, his walk, 
His walk in the Lord was going to be different. From the moment forward, he was going to be guided by a new living way. And what is this new living way? It's a way that was traced on the cross of Calvary by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he comes to say, I am the way. So he introduced to it as Isaiah a new way. And with two, they flew. Why? Because now he was going to be an spiritual man. Now he would walk in spirit. So this seraphim that is shown, two wings covering the face and the feet and it's flying. He's saying, speaking about the glory of the Father, the walk who is the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So it reveals to Isaiah the Trinity. Because the plan, plan of God for my life, for your life, for our life is Trinity. The glory of the Father, the way of the Son, and the caring of us by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Lord shows those things to Isaiah in order for him to become what he became and what Isaiah became. Isaiah was known in the Bible by a man, the man that studied the Bible as a, a messia, messianic prophet, the prophet that prophesied the most regarding the Lord Jesus. Isaiah says amazing things regarding Jesus. On chapter 9, he says, because a son was born and a son was given to him, He's going to be a wonderful counselor, strong God, father of eternity, prince of peace, because now he has reached to understand. He knew, he had this knowledge of the plan of God for his life. And salvation, my, my brother and sister, is exactly this, is to have this knowledge of the plan of God for my life, for your life, and for our lives, and not only to know, not only to discern, but to walk, on that path that the Lord has opened up for each one of us. And that's what Isaiah did when he says, and rests upon you the Spirit of the Lord. And it says that the eyes of the blind are going to be opened, and the ears of the deaf are going to also be opened. He prophesied against Jesus. Uh, regarding Jesus, because our eyes were going to be open. And our eyes are being opened tonight for the project of God, and our ears are going to be open. So we'll be paying attention to hear and to know the plan, the project of God for our lives. And he speaks about Isaiah, Isaiah 53, that describes exactly this pair of wings on the face that speaks about our God. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ became as a man, but manifested through him his, the glory of God, the power of God, the grace of God, the favor of God. The one who carried upon himself our pain, the affliction, it was afflicted and he was oppressed. And when we looked to him, there was no beauty so that we might desire him. So we are showing you this, this plan, the aspect of salvation through Christ Jesus. But my brethren, all of this was possible because the king, Uzziah, he died on that year. So do you want salvation? Do you want to have knowledge of the plan and the project of God for our life? Do you want to have an understanding? or do want to be a part of that people that do not know, that do not have an understanding? Or do you want to know God only from hearing about? Isaiah? There came a moment in the life of Isaiah that he needed to see this, to live this experience. The word says that when the king Uzziah dies, he saw the Lord. Are we willing to do this, to let go the king 
die in our lives. Jesus, when he goes to preach and people ask him, how am I going to pray? Teach us how to pray. And the Lord taught them. He teaches us how to pray. And he says the following, may your will be done. May the will of the Father be done. So, from this day forward, the one who is going to reign is the Father. From this day, from this year forward, I'm no longer the Uzziah that is going to reign upon my life. From this day forward, the one who is going to reign is the Lord upon my life. Amen. Let's sing a song. Glory to God. Holy is your name. The church will stand up at this moment. The Lord has shown in a vision that from the beginning of the service, an angel was positioned at the door of the church. 
And as we enter into this place, the angel would look to our hands. And what we were, were bringing to the house of the Lord. And the brother and sister, they could see that a few brought the word of the Lord with them, and others would bring vessels. And the ones who brought vessels, they came here with those vessels in order to have this, those vessels renewed, restored. And during the service, the angel would cause us to understand that in order for those vessels to be renewed, restored, they needed to be, they needed the Word of God inside of the heart of each one of them. They needed to use the Word of God in their lives and that's how only the way in which their vessels would be renewed and restored. And the use of the Word of God has to be constant in our lives. I cannot just use the Word of the Lord only during the period, only during the service to relay a message. I cannot use the Word of God only in my hands but I try to hide it. I heed your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. When we have the word of God in our lives, in our, inside of us, in our hearts, the project of God is renewed in our lives. That's what happened with Isaiah. When the king died, when the old understanding vanished from his life, when the other one began, began to reign, then he had a complete understanding of the project of God and was used in praise and adoration and glorification to the Lord. Everything that he saw in the heaven of eternity, he was able to do on earth in the midst of his brethren. Holy, holy, holy is a lot of hosts. And down they were saying, he was, holy is the Father, Holy is the Son and Holy is the Holy Spirit that He has reserved for each one of us in His eternity. Lord, we thank you because we thank for Your grace, for Your favor and mercy, for Your relations that we have been able to reach, for Your mercy, Lord, that has sanctified us, purified us, and justified us before You, Lord. By the blood of Jesus that was poured out on the cross of Calvary for the love of our lives, I want to praise You for all of this. Because everything comes from you. They, everything comes from your throne. And all the honor, the Lord. All the praise and all the adoration may be for you, Lord. Take us on in peace so that we may have a blessed week by blessed by you. We pray in the name of Jesus. And let me say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. If you, my brother and sister, who are with us tonight, desire prayer, clarification of what was said, you remain where you are, raise your hand so that we may identify you, and afterwards you may receive the proper assistance. We have service on every Tuesday and, and Thursday, every, always at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 6 o'clock we have a meeting geared towards the women. And also, Saturday at 7.30 and Sunday at 7.30 we also have service of glorification of the Lord every Sunday at 10.30 in the morning we have here in the church our Sunday school everyone is invited to participate probably this coming Sunday is going to be a little different there is uh, a program uh, schedule but Pastor Ronildo is going to give the instructions to the brethren if you need a prayer, just raise your hand. <laughs>